Today, the Democrats fully embrace normalizing pedophilia, uh, I guess to own the cons. I'm not really sure. We'll get into that. Also, Joe Biden calls for Vladimir Putin to be tried as a war criminal, and Elon Musk is appointed to Twitter's board of directors. Are changes on the horizon? We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by the dynamic duo, fan favorites, Blaze TV contributors, both Yakubuyans, host of The Bottom Line, and Eric July, host of For Canon's Sake. Uh, please subscribe to both of these gentlemen. You are not going to want to miss their commentary on uh, everything that's going on in society. Uh, speaking of what's going on in society and uh, the commentary that we all need from you guys. Um, Perfect people to have on today as we discuss Ketanji Brown Jackson and uh, whether or not she will be confirmed by the Senate. Republican Senator Mitt Romney of Utah, which I feel like we should stop calling him Republican Senator mm -hmm. and just call him what he is, uh, which is a backstabbing, nasty, SOB, uh, also Democrat. Uh, Mitt Romney said that he would vote in favor of confirming Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, he said that uh, he said after reviewing Judge Jackson's record and testimony, I have concluded that she is a well-qualified jurist and a person of honor. Which I feel like is a weird thing to say about someone who goes very lax on people convicted convicted of uh, child pornography. I feel like that's a little weird to say. Uh, he says, while I do not expect to agree with every decision she may make on the court, I believe that she more than meets the standard of excellence and integrity. I congratulate Judge Jackson on her expected confirmation and look forward to her continued service to our nation. Now, this is bizarre um, because he actually voted against her nomination to the United States Court of Appeals uh, for the D.C. Circuit just there last year. So mm -hmm. it's odd to see him doing this. It's almost like he just gets off on going against his own party anytime he thinks that it may be like owning Trump. I don't know. It's like that seems to be when he took his turn was a uh, Trump derangement syndrome that he clearly has. And I guess it's clouded his judgment. Uh, Murkowski also announced that she would support Ketanji Brown Jackson. Uh, she said, the, that her support for Jackson rests on my rejection of the corrosive politis, politicization of the review process for Supreme Court nominees, which on both sides of the aisle is growing worse and more detached from reality by the year. Now, might I, gentlemen, I know you have both been on this program when we have discussed uh, Josh Hawley, who seems to be the only one with enough balls to do the deep dive required uh, into this woman's history and background in giving convicted, uh, people convicted of having child pornography, giving them lesser sentences, uh, lesser than what the, the DOJ is asking for, lesser than what uh, they are requesting, and often siding with them, having, uh, having empathy for them, having sympathy for them, making excuses for them. She's said this in her own testimony during her confirmation hearings. Well, Josh Hawley is trying to do something about it, so he tweeted this out today. I just went to the Senate floor to try to pass a bill toughening sentences on child pornographers. Guys, uh, you, we would think that we could all agree on this, right? Yeah. Child pornography is bad. Let's go ahead and pass a bill to toughen the sentences on child pornographers. He goes on to say, Democrats blocked it, again, calling the child porn crisis a, quote, conspiracy theory, and that tells you everything you need to know. Now, you may read his tweet and think to yourself, Maybe he's just, maybe he's exaggerating. You know, maybe he's using it to grandstand. Maybe he's using it to make a political issue. Well, here's the problem, is that there is a video from C-SPAN during all of this back and forth discussion on Josh Hawley's legislation in which Dick Durbin uh, basically says, well, I mean, you know, they're like, because of the internet, they could have thousands of images, the, all these child porn pedos, uh, you know, if that's their decision, I don't know. Why Watch this. Reserving the right to object. I have to ask myself, why now? Why does the junior senator from Missouri bring this bill to the floor of the United States Senate today? When you think back, 
This matter has been considered. Originally, the guidelines were considered in 1984. The question of child pornography came back to us in 2003. In 2005, there was a Supreme Court case about applying the guidelines on sentencing to these types of cases, a case known as Booker. We know that in 2005, that decision was handed down. We know Mm -hmm. in 2012, the Sentencing Commission said to Congress and to the world, you need to do something here. These guidelines that you promulgated don't reflect the reality of today. We know as well that uh, the guidelines were written, some were written in an era when the materials we're talking about were physical materials. And we now live in a world of internet and Mm -hmm. access to not just tens and hundreds, but thousands of images, if that is your decision. If that is your decision, if it is, I mean, look, if it's your decision to be a sicko and go look at uh, pictures of children who are victims of sexual abuse and assault, I mean, that's just your decision. Who are we to say that you're wrong, right? So now, because it is, is more accessible to these people, somehow it's excusable. It makes it okay. Let's go lesser on them because they, I mean, they can't help it that they have access to it and now they're gonna go find it. Yeah, so number one, he's archaic, he's a dinosaur. And let, let's talk to Dick Durbin when there's porn of one of his granddaughters mm-hmm. out there that you can't get back. He'll be the first guy to call organizations like ours to say, find my child, take it off the internet, get her out of the hands of the predators, This is the hypocrisy. He's saying because it was a physical photo, which was a Polaroid back then, Mm -hmm. it's still a photograph. You're still photographing a naked child. You're videoing it. It's no different. Whether it's digital or physical has nothing to do with this. It actually is more egregious because it shows you the nature of of the, the toxicity of the individuals that they are aligning themselves with. They are 100% aligning themselves with the abuse of children, the sexual abuse of children. I replied to Josh Hawley's text and I said, Josh, this is a national security. You know now the average age of porn entry is our boys age eight in America, okay? You now have child on child porn. When it's out there, every single child sex trafficker uses porn to trap the child. They make porn, they groom the kids through porn. Porn feeds trafficking. This is who the left is. We have to just brand them now. They are, in fact, pedophiles. Mm-hmm. Because if you align with that and you're okay with it, you are, you're aligning yourself with pedophiles. You're right? certainly normalizing I'm it. I'm flying to Washington, if I may say this. Please. I'm, I'm flying to Washington, D.C. immediately after this show. I'm in D.C. tomorrow meeting with the National Center of Child Sexual Exploitation. 100% based on a bill that we're taking around states to bring tougher sentencing at state level because we anticipated that they were going to block Josh at, at, mm-hmm. a, at a Senate level. So we're going state by state. Oklahoma has already passed some of this. And, but we must. If we can't protect the children, but, <laughs> but again, it lines up with the president. I can say from the president all the way down that whole party, they're coming for your kids and they want to sexualize them. And I'll say it over and over. People don't like it when I say it. The end result is child rape is where it ends up because that child porn is not innocent. Mm-hmm. Children are going to suffer at rates we can't measure. Eric, it seems uh, like a certain level of projection when I hear Dick Durbin asking Josh Hawley, well, why? Why now? Like, well, because this is the conversation that we've been having for the last three weeks, and I thought since this is the topic of conversation, maybe I should bring it up because we're talking about it. And instead, Dick Durbin questions him when really I'm wondering Why are you going against it? Why are you opposing this other than to just say, I oppose every single thing that the Republicans do? I mean, that's politics, is it not? I mean, that's pretty much what it is. But there used to be some specific certain things that both parties would agree. I I mean, I I think that's optimistic, but I honestly think these people have been evil for a long time. It's just folks have been looking the other way. Or we talk about access to information. The spread of information has Mm. increased so much that people, yeah, exactly. Exactly that, so they can't hide it. So we see these, you know, you don't have to sit up there and watch C-SPAN all day. Right. You see a viral video on your Twitter and Instagram, yeah. and bam, this information certainly is out there. I think these people have uh, certainly been 
been evil. But regarding this subject matter, this is straight political. We know what's going on with Katanji Brown, and it has a lot to certainly do with that and be in opposition because it's a subject matter that they have presented as, okay, well, maybe she's not uh, fit to certainly be in this position. But that's what politics, the game of politics is. They even, it's funny to hear them say that. And previously, I remember them doing that exact same thing regarding this lynching, anti-lynching uh, sort of bill. Well, you know, you get something that happens in the public sphere and then you try to uh, grandstand with yeah. some bill. That, like, that's literally all politics certainly has been. And then we call the other side hypocrites when it's like the shoes on the other foot. Mm -hmm. But something as egregious as, as this, yeah, it should be not up for discussion mm -hmm. but it is unfortunately because they made it that way and they have been very successful mm -hmm. to write off the opposition as conspiracy theorists as someone that is not well intended and then they just carry on like absolutely nothing happened uh, they say yo squirrel they expect you to look the other way mm -hmm. and then it goes on and you know we re revisit it maybe later down the line but something else agrees just has to happen for us to even talk about it again they're very good at that because they for the most part control the conversation i believe and i know there's going to be folks that are within this community that's going to be frustrated with me bringing this up when you see what's happening with this whole sexualization of children uh in, in like the, with this be the schooling space or with this movement per se this is all freaking connected man this yes. is all connected to act like it has nothing to do with any yes. of it mm -hmm. is this in being dis disingenuous why you think it's happening after you talk about what's happening why now why now yeah you're right right. Why, right why now would you right. write off something like that did that have something to do with what's going on like it could be all of that because again they operate as if you know, the, the climate is the climate and we it's all about politics. It's not about what's right. It's not about what's justice. It's not about what's uh, uh, doing right by specifically the vulnerable demographic that you think anybody on any side of the political spectrum would be like, mm. leave them alone. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, just leave them alone. And they can't do that mm. at all. And you see what's going on with Florida, which really highlights that it's less about the bill with Florida. It's yes. about who exposed themselves yeah. out, out, out of it. Yes. Right. Yeah. And when you have a bill that doesn't even specify sexuality, mm. however, it seems to be one side of the alphabet spectrum, as I'm saying, as I usually call it seems to be so butthurt about this probably shouldn't use that analogy but seems to be uh feeling some kind That's of way an accurate analogy <laughs> seems to be feeling some kind of way about about what's going on despite it be it'd be a don't say gay bill just as much as it would be a don't say straight bill yes. but unfortunately they're the ones that are all upset why do you think that is because they're telling on themselves these are i said it yesterday we're dealing with very evil people yeah. and it's difficult for folks like us that are rational to be like you got it there's got to be another reason why you're doing this type of stuff sometimes it is stupidity often it is stupidity but when these people are faced with the facts and it's not up for dispute. At that point, you can't fall back on stupidity. You got to just say, we're dealing with some yes. literal demons, man. Yes. Literal yes. demons. It's it's the scene in Batman, right, where Alfred says some people just want to watch the world, world burn. burn. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it literally is that. And unfortunately, when to see your children. But I want to bring it back to Mitt Romney. Right before the show, I called a very prominent family in the Mormon community in Utah. And I said, what's your guy doing? What? Seriously. And I was on speaker here for some of the crew to hear. And they went, he's not our guy. He's no longer our guy, and he, will not be, he, and he will not be reelected even in Utah. Let's just, for, for the love of life as conservatives, start calling a spade a spade. That guy is not one of us. He's not one of us. And in the shadows, he'll vote a certain way. When no one was watching, mm -hmm. he'll vote against Ketanji Brown. But when the light is on... He aligns That's himself because it's political because yeah. it's political. It's political. Well, he aligns himself with the left every I, single time. I'm glad that you said that because my, my question was going to be, and I know we have to go to break in a second, but I think this is an important conversation that we're having right now. My question was going to be, I, I think we can all agree at the table that the right move for anyone who is on the side of children is to lean into the left's constant digging in their heels at, you know, pro protesting, mm -hmm. not being able to sexualize kids in schools, protesting uh, all of these things, protesting child pornographers getting tough sentences. Like, as Eric just said, they're telling on themselves, yes, right? Yes. So we should be leaning into it, but how the hell do you do that when you have the Mitt Romneys of the world who are like, oh, well, we're just gonna go along with it. Child porn isn't so bad. <laughs> And that guy's How not do you just, do it? You got to understand, that guy's not just abandoning the party. 
He is a fraud and a fake in his faith. Because his faith is family first. The Mormon, there's no, look, there's some evil yeah. stuff in every religion. He has like 10 million grandchildren. Yeah. How the hell do you excuse Again, this type I'm of behavior? Dick Durbin, call me when Dick Durbin shop made that child never go through well, it. But they'll be the first ones to cry wolf right. when their kids are being, you know, approached by a predator. like, oh, help us. It's just like the George Clooney's of the world. I should have a gun and a high fence around my yard because I'm important. Oh, yeah, right. But you can't. Right. It's the right. exact same Just thing. real quick, like yeah. this is the contrarianism of the Muramis of the world because they get off by being praised by the left. I've even seen people that call themselves full organizations or rather publications that call themselves libertarian, though they they couldn't be anything further from mm-hmm. it. Actually advocating that Mitt Romney be nominated by the Republican Party because they're yeah. under some moronic yeah, impression exactly that people people would uh, support support them. It goes to show because that's what he's getting off on. That. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, look, the left praises me yes. because yep. because I'm I, I'm yep. one of the Republicans. But, you know, I'm on a different side. I've been telling y'all he was a quack long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. You can start to see the receipts, not a Republican Party and the conservatives are starting to get along with it. But remember, I always say it every time we talk about Mitt Romney, you wanted him over Ron Paul. You had a chance, but you don't. I will never let y'all leave it down. Never forget that was y'all's nominee. And to act like he wasn't a quack back then, certainly when it came to his economic illiteracy, he was a quack back then. And now he's just it's just more exposed. But don't forget y'all nominated that. You tell him, brother. Not, not that he's you holding a grudge. No, no, no. I'm not holding a grudge that's uh, true. about that's John true. McCain and, uh, uh, and Mitt Romney. Romney, not at all. Not at all. I'm proud of Ripper. Uh, all right. We've got to we've got to go to break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Birch Gold. So I you guys know this. If you watch this program or are not living under a rock, there's a lot of global upheaval that has been caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, the crippling sanctions on Russian trade are showing to have massive ripple effects across the world, including here in the United States. And of course, that, it's not just that. It's, uh, you know, the gas pump. Food prices are soaring right now. And to quote President Biden, with regards to food shortages, it's going to be real. He's even admitting, OK, you, now is the time to hedge against inflation. You can do that with gold and silver, and you should be doing that with Birch Gold. Uh, Birch Gold is trusted by thousands of satisfied customers, and they are the leader in making sure that you diversify. Because, look, let me tell you something. You've got this nest egg that you've been building up for your retirement. It could all be depleted through no fault of your own. Don't let that happen, okay? Hedge against inflation. Birch Gold will help you convert an IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered account in gold and silver. Right now, you can get started. Text the word Y to 989898. Uh, like I said, they've got thousands of satisfied customers. They've got an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Let them help you. Don't sleep on this. It's just going to get worse out there. Joe Biden is even admitting it. All right, text the word Y to 989898. You're going to get a free info kit on gold. There's no obligation, no reason not to do it. That is Y to 989898. Things just getting more intense between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, There were alleged war crimes discovered as Ukrainian forces worked to reclaim the areas around Kyiv from withdrawing Russian troops. Uh, The Los Angeles Times reported that Ukrainian forces found mass graves in the suburbs of Kyiv. And uh, apparently these graves were filled with the corpses of civilians. The suburban streets are also said to be littered with civilian corpses. There are videos surfacing. Uh, I've seen certain videos, again, with what's going on in this specific area. It is very hard to tell what is real and what is not. So I don't want to uh, bring these videos here until they can be properly vetted. But it does look very bad. Uh, A lot of these civilians that were dead did indicate signs of uh, torture and execution. Bodies were found with their hands tied behind them, seemingly fatal gunshot wounds at the base of their skulls. Joe Biden was asked about this. uh, I believe this was yesterday. And here is what he had to say. You may remember I got criticized for calling Putin a war criminal. Well, the truth of the matter, you saw what happened in Vukic. This warrants him. He is a war criminal. But we have to gather the information. We have to continue to provide Ukraine with the weapons they need to continue the fight. And we have to gather all the detail so this can be an actual have a war crime trial. This guy is brutal. And what's happening in Bukha is outrageous. And everyone's seen it. Up to Allah. No, I think it is a war crime. I'm seeking more sanctions, yes. I'll have time to announce that to you. 
Now, uh, just to add to the conversation, um, to try to give some some uh, full circle, full spectrum uh, of this particular situation, there have also been allegations of Ukraine engaging in uh, war crime behavior as well. So it's very hard to know who to trust in this particular uh, battle. And as I like to point out whenever we talk about it, sometimes there's just not a good guy. Yep. And I think that Americans need to be willing to wrap their brains around that. We want to view everything as like good guy, bad guy, which one's good, which one's bad. Sometimes they're just both bad. And you got to go into history. And this is not the Ukrainian people we're talking about. Right. Just like when we say communist China, it's not the Chinese people that's you know, right, right, living right. hand to mouth. It's their regimes and their leadership. And may I remind everybody, President Trump exposed the corruption mm -hmm. of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And Zelensky. And this is a country that has safe harbored money launderers, traffickers, drug traffickers. Historically, it's been a trading post for the world. So sometimes it's just not a good guy. And I know they want to hail the Ukrainian leadership as the great guys. The people are the ones suffering. Yeah, of course. So that's probably Joe Biden's most coherent moment in his political <laughs> career right there. Maybe, you know, and it's, it's, he should save that and put it on loop. That's, that's yeah. as mm -hmm. good as it's going to get, folks. Yeah. And I mean, unspeakable things happening, I think, over there uh, in Ukraine. But again, not I hesitate to like want to get involved at all, but specifically with this guy at the helm that we have. Well, I mean, this is war. I mean, that's, and war is ugly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny we use the term war crimes all the time. I mean, not to commit a sort of this act of more red herring or yelling squirrel or anything, but look, America and its foreign policy is certainly guilty of plenty of war crimes. Well, how about specifically uh, the last administration that Joe Biden was a part of? Yeah, oh, oh most, most God, definitely. Oh definitely, oh, they certainly used to fund both sides of the different yeah. wars as well. But no, that's what happens when it gets ugly. Definitely when you're dealing with people that are neighboring each other, that hate each other uh, in some way, not less about the people and more about the governments um, uh, between them. So while I don't at all deny, and this is where I think the people have difficulty wrapping their minds around, is that they act as if acknowledging that, well, this, like you can't do both things. Like you can't acknowledge, which you can, that Russia and what Putin is doing, yeah, it's screwed up and certainly there are going to be people that are suffering because of it. But you can also say, well, not just even given America's track record, but what that means certainly for the American people in the event that there's some heightened sort of involvement uh, could have some very, very severe sort of ramifications. And people act like you can't have both of those, mm -hmm. both of those positions. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this sucks. I acknowledge that it right. sucks. Um, but in the same respect, it could suck more for us. Right. So maybe this shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing this, this in the, in the third. But I think this is, what sucks so much about, I'll say, obviously, the libertarian at the table is going to gripe about governments and just governments around the world and how they operate and how we accept this is such a such a, a thing that has to happen. Like, just think about that. You have loads of people. You you know it happened. We saw the videos of it happening to the point to where people in Russia were getting arrested because of this, because the people themselves did not want this. Yes. Right. The people themselves did the not Russian want this. Russian citizens. Yeah. They did not, did, did not want this. They wanted no conflict. You had athletes putting themselves on the on mm -hmm. the line mm -hmm. there, really saying no war. We don't want this. And yet, despite that, you have a, a entity that has a monopoly uh, on force basically in violence in that particular geographical area goes and does it anyway. And we just accept that as like, this is something that just has to happen because sometimes because roads, right? It always comes back to you wanting something sort of out of it. So it's something that you just deal with. I'm like, definitely considering how connected the world is. I believe that this is, it was archaic before, but it's certainly archaic now. And I think people have to keep sight of that, that it isn't, the people per se, though it is individuals that fight, fight fighting these wars on behalf of the government. Ultimately, when it comes to waging these sorts of ugly wars, it's governments that are are doing that and have historically done it. Yeah, um, I want to it's talking about Joe Biden uh, specifically. I want to kind of switch gears here and um, play for you guys a uh, an interesting clip from a press conference with White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Uh, we've covered the low approval numbers that Joe Biden has now. I mean, disastrous. And if you're 
paying attention, you know exactly why that is. Um, but interesting question. This was from uh, Today News Africa reporter. This is correspondent Simon Atiba. Who am I saying that right? Atiba. Yeah. Atiba. Simon Atiba, who uh, actually just point blank asked Jen Psaki about Joe Biden's approval rating and who he was planning on blaming this one on. Watch. On his uh, approval rating, when he came into office last year, he was around 60 percent and even more, and now he's around 40 percent and sometimes less. Who does he blame now? Putin, Trump, or you? The communication. Oh, does he blame me? Oh, I don't know. Um, I hope not. Um, look, I, I think that um, the president recognizes that um, the country uh, is still grappling with a number of challenges that impact people in their everyday lives, uh, whether that is a continuing fight uh, with a pandemic that has been going on for several years, or the fact that costs are going up. Uh, some of those are a result of uh, the actions of President Putin, yes, as it relates to gas prices, uh, but others oh. are uh, related to impacts of COVID-19 and impacts mm -hmm. on the supply chain. Mm -hmm. So what our focus is and his focus continues to be on solutions to address mm -hmm. these challenges and mm -hmm. uh, keeping our heads down and trying to continue to deliver yeah. for the American people. I just don't think Americans are buying this answer anymore, that we are not still in a big p pandemic where everyone is suffering and, uh, you know, having to shut down their businesses. Uh, we saw the gas prices spike before anything happened with Russia and Ukraine that had nothing to do with Putin. I just can't imagine that Americans are buying this anymore, um, but at least she is being asked the tough questions. I'm gonna give you both about 30 seconds to respond. Even the Africans know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not even the Africans are buying it. Yeah, exactly. You know? so, so, I mean, this is, this is a worldwide joke. Um, a good leader in a time of crisis his approval ratings will go up, mm -hmm. not down. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll say about that. That's a great point, Eric. I just get so fascinated at these self-inflicted wounds that are done by these governments, and they act like it's just some like external factor right. that has to play into yeah. this. So she's referring to like COVID. Like COVID didn't do and anything. She, costs are going up. Yeah, yeah, Why costs, do you think yeah, that Yeah, exactly. Is? It's like y'all had everything to do <laughs> yeah. with right. that but it goes to show they'll shift the blame any any time they can oh uh -huh. yeah uh all right we've got more to come including elon musk being assigned to twitter's board of directors i have a feeling these gentlemen will have something to say about that first we want to thank our sponsor bambi so uh if you're running a small business you already know this but every dollar counts especially now after they shut all your businesses down and you lost all this money because of the government you're you got to count your pennies now all right you got to give your team the HR support they need at a price you will love with Bambi. This is an HR platform that is built uh, for businesses like yours. So you can automate the most important HR practices and get your own dedicated HR manager. Uh, Bambi's HR autopilot automates your core policies, workplace training, and employee feedback. And then your dedicated HR manager will help you navigate the more complex parts of HR and guide you to compliance. They're available by phone, email, or real-time chat. Look, an in-house HR manager can cost up to $80,000 a year. But with Bambi, you will have a dedicated HR manager, and that starts at just $99 a month. There's no hidden fees. You can cancel anytime. Uh, I think Bambi is great because of their cost. Again, if you are a business owner, you understand this. You are in it to profit, and you cannot profit if you're spending too much money on things like HR managers when you can get one for $99 a month. Bambi has received thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot. Their customers are four times less likely to have a claim filed against them. Let Bambi help you. You can go to Bambi.com slash matters for your free HR audit. That is Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E dot -E com slash matters. Yesterday, we brought to you the news that uh, Elon Musk had bought a 9.2% stake in Twitter that made him the largest shareholder in the company. And uh, today, they actually, Twitter announced that, uh, this is the Twitter CEO who announced that the social media platform will be appointing Elon Musk to the company's board of directors. Uh, he says, through conversations with Elon in recent weeks, it became clear to us that he would bring great value to our board. Uh, Elon responded, looking forward to working with, I don't know how to say his name, Parag? Mm -hmm. Parag and Parag. Twitter board to make significant improvements to Twitter in the coming months. Uh, so, 
You know, it's interesting because in these last couple days, Elon has been, well, I should say in the last couple weeks, he's been tweeting out random questions to Twitter users. Uh, you know, first, before he purchased the largest uh, share in Twitter, he was asking, do you think another social media platform should be formed? Should I go do this? What should I do? Do you think freedom of speech is under assault? Just all of these random questions that he was asking Twitter users. Uh, yesterday, he asked the question, do you want an edit button? And then, of course, misspelled both of the uh, options, yes or no, <laughs> just to prove a point. He is an oddball, that one. Um, but it's interesting because he has been very outspoken about how they are suppressing voices on Twitter. And to have the Twitter CEO uh, come out and say, hey, we're really excited because we think that he can really uh, bring a good view, a good point of view to our board, do you, the cynical part in me is like, I don't think at all that they're changing their mentality or their philosophy. I think they just realize that they've gotten so much backlash for it that they need to optics wise, make it appear that they are trying to work together with all parties. Do I have that wrong? Yeah, I, I agree. Look, they've also got a safe face. And so he yeah. owns 9.2% equal. He's the largest single shareholder, but JP Morgan, JP Morgan, JP Morgan owns 9.2. The third is BlackRock. The third largest shareholder is BlackRock. People would say, well, now he can tank, he can you know, delete Twitter. He paid $2.2 billion for 9%. He's not, he, and he can't with 9% delete Twitter. He can, however, have a significant impact as a board member to sway the board. 11 members to the board. He'll be number 12. Jack Dorsey will leave. There'll be 11. And he can make an impact at the board. But also remember, he's probably looking down the line. You've got to ask yourself, why? Why now? It's not to make money. This guy can go make money, start five other companies, another boring company or something else, and call it the lame company and make it a billion-dollar <laughs> rocket ship or whatever he wants to do, right? He can do that. Strategically, he's looking down the line. It may be self-preservation a little bit. Why go build it if it's built and I can influence it? Hopefully, he will influence the boardroom. But I think they're saving face because mm -hmm. he kind of slapped them in public. Yeah. I'm going to buy 9.2% for $2.2 because I can. Fellow South African, very proud of the guy. Okay, <laughs> Another African-American. Another African-American, right? yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> because I can. And they're saving face going, oh, he's going to be on our board and we're going we're gonna to coexist and yay. Right. And then, of course, stock jumped 26%. Mm -hmm. What would be interesting, though, is if that guy pumps, if it's a pump and dump, if that guy pumps stock and decides three, four months from now, I'm selling. Right, and he mm. jumps ship, mm -hmm. he could hurt them bad. I don't know that he'll do that, but he could hurt Twitter that way. But this whole talk about shutting down Twitter, he, no, stop it. He can't shut down Twitter. That can't happen, but I think he can influence the board. Mm. Eric? I was reading that there was some, either some agreement with him entering on the board that he couldn't own or he wouldn't own more than 15%, if I'm not 14, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, mistaken. 14, 15, yeah. I think that's a big part of this conversation mm -hmm. as far as why that mm -hmm. move certainly was made. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when you own that that many or that high percentage of shares, yeah, you get to you know move your muscle around a little bit. Doesn't mean that you just get I'm the one that dictates. I'm not king of Twitter. That's not how it works. But yeah, your your voice certainly means something. And as I mentioned yesterday, I do believe that a lot of this had to do with the fact that he. He was actually feeling the brunt of, mm -hmm. of some of these sorts of policies with his Twitter having to be vetted and all of that. And you've seen him complain in the past about some of this, even with like the COVID situation. Yeah. So I believe it was more so, OK, this impacts me. Yes. And I don't like it. Yeah. And I got enough money to do something right. about it. Right. So I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a shot. So, yeah, it's not to say that it's going to change or certainly something, though he did. He didn't. Bragg didn't say the coming years. He said the next coming months. So I don't know what type of big situation sort of changes and adjustments are going to be made, if any. Me personally, I am more interested in the dynamic between those that are still there for Twitter that have been leading the charge on a lot of these policy changes over the last uh, years. And if there's going to be sort of a conflict there and what exactly that looks like, I'm more intrigued by that. If Twitter died tomorrow, I wouldn't lose as much sleep, and despite me having a big following it's of the social media platform. It's not like they pay me. Nice. So if it goes, it goes. But on a serious note, I do mm. understand the cultural impact, and I'm interested in that dynamic and if that there's going to be some sort of conflict that is meaningful 
out of this, whether it be with people jumping ship, whether it be with their adjust, if there being an adjustment or reverse mm -hmm. of, of some sort of policy, because now they have someone in there that has money, though. Yeah, he's a he's a billionaire. He's part of billionaire class, but he's not like. He's different from a lot of right. them, certainly yeah. uh, intellectually. So I was reading, uh, I was reading through this interaction on Twitter between the Twitter CEO and Elon, and it was interesting because there seem to be a lot of people who are like, "He's going to bring back President Trump to Twitter. Don't let them do it." And uh, there was one guy in particular who had like I don't know 500 followers, but I he was just a regular Twitter user. And he said, if you bring back President Trump, I'm not buying a Tesla ever again. And I'm like, I don't think Elon Musk gives a crap yeah. whether, and in fact, I actually um, would venture to guess that you've never purchased a Tesla in yeah. your life and you're yeah. just simply saying that. But yeah. I just found it so interesting that like all of these people, they think that if they uh, they can pile on and 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 tweet something out, that they'll have, I don't know, what, are you going to cancel Elon Musk? You're not going to well, do that. Because You're not going to do that. They understand, the left particularly understands that they have gained so much power, not necessarily yes. in the political sense, yes. but they gain so much power by way of optics and by way of being able to control the conversation between different forms of social media. Yep. If something like that is reversed, they lose a lot of perceived legitimacy, yeah. and they understand that, and they don't want to let that go. Yeah. One thing Password. I want to say real quick. Sometimes as an investor, especially an inventor, you need to see under the hood a little bit. <laughs> and you can't see under the hood from the outside. Yeah. But when you're a board member, you approve all financials. Yeah. You see everything. Now you look into BlackRock's investments, J.P. Morgan's investments. And Twitter knows at the drop of a hat, Elon calls Peter Thiel. He says, Peter, you and me, we're going to go build another Twitter. Mm. This is so dangerous for Twitter. Musk is not stupid. The first time they disagree with him at the board, because this guy doesn't dance, okay? Yeah. I'm going to love watching the sparks fly. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a necessary evil they're tolerating at the moment right. because he threw down some cash. Right, right. All right, uh, we've got more to come, but we've got to take a break. We'll be back. It's very interesting. Uh, we talked about California trying to uh, give reparations to black people who can prove that they have a direct uh, lineage to a slave. But here's a new one. A California city is planning to give universal basic income to... <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Golly. To transgender and non-binary residents, uh, regardless of their earnings level. Regardless of their earnings level, this is Palm Springs, California. Transgender residents are eligible to receive a UBI of up to $900 per month. <laughs> Just, I'm just laughing so I don't cry. I'm sorry. It's not actually funny. It's actually really, really painful to read. Um, but I'm just laughing because I don't want to cry. This is going to have $200,000 set aside for allocation. And this was a unanimous vote by the Palm Springs City Council last week. Uh, um, by the way, uh, Republican, former San Diego City Councilman uh, Carl DeMeo, who was a Republican who served as the first openly gay member of that city council, did call the program outrageous and discriminatory. Um, but uh, great things happening in California. Uh, that is awesome. I hope everyone who loves California stays the hell there and out of my state because y'all done gone completely crazy. What's, what's the qualifying mechanism? How many hours must you have been trans to qualify? Is it a day? Is it a week? Well, that is a great question because gender is qualified? fluid and yeah, you how, can how go long? back and how forth. Long, how long must you have been? Because I'm telling you, you're going to get a whole lot of folk transition today. <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Mean, good luck. How much, did, how much did they appropriate? Not 200000 Our projects, Our projects, but no, that was just the allocation. Our projects budget is estimated uh, at about $1.8 billion. Of $1. course. $1.8 million. Yeah. 1.8 million, good luck. You're gonna get a whole influx of people coming for that money. I just... I <laughs> good luck, <laughs> so, good luck. This is so insane. No, it's nuts. California it's insane. is, <sighs> it's a crap hole, but I, I just, I'm just so fascinated, I guess is the proper term, and having conversations with people on that side of the world, uh, which they are, they actually believe like there's no better place. Not necessarily there, more so you get into LA because they've been indoctrinated to believe that it's like LA peaked 
in the 80s, man, like maybe in the yeah. late 70s. Yeah. Like those late days, 70s. yeah, those glory days are long gone, man. You live in a crap hole. Uh, but this sort of political welfare statism is it's hilarious. But the only thing that freaks me out about it, I'm perfectly fine with them being content with running their areas into the ground, less about them moving and more about sharing a government federally with these crack smokers. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fun, I'm not <laughs> fond of that at all. So I just want to figure out if there's a way that we can um, either secede from the union ourselves out of Texas so we don't share a government with California or convince the Californians to secede and they stay in their box over there. Both of them are preferable and I, I support them 100%. I just don't understand the mentality in California, of all places, that they keep saying, like, transgender people are so marginalized here. I'm like, what are you talking about? They literally run everything now. Yeah. No, the tail's There's wagging like the dog. A, a tra- a, like, <laughs> one random transgender person on Twitter who nobody knows can yeah. say something like, uh, Harry's razors, uh, you know, My- Michael Knowles is discriminatory and you guys shouldn't support him. And, like, they drop as a sponsor. So it's just bizarre in California, of all places, they keep trying to push this notion that these people are marginalized. It yeah, seems to me like they're the smallest percentage and they're running the whole damn show. They Well, the birthplace of all evil is right there. I mean, this is where you go. This this is the evil lab. This is Dr. Evil's laboratory. This is where you go cook up the evil cocktail to sexualize children mm-hmm. and dismantle a country. And this is where they go. I mean, look, birds of a feather. That's all I can say. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're a cray-cray and you want to break America, you migrate to the West Coast and you go smoke whatever they smoke over there <laughs> to completely lose your mind. It must be really good stuff, to be fair. No, I, don't I know, wouldn't man. know. Well, but it's, 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 a, it's a little crack in there sprinkled in, and I'm not too fond of certainly that. So, Yeah, yeah that's a fair point. All right, uh, we got to take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just read this off air, and I didn't I didn't say anything to you, Yaku, but did, did you know about uh, in Ohio, Republican lawmakers have actually now put forth uh, their own version of the parental rights and education bill. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, they have now introduced that. Ha- are you familiar with that at all? Yes. yes Does it have a shot at passing? It, it has a shot. And remember, we passed a similar bill just yes. two weeks ago in Oklahoma. Yes. Yeah, well, that, Oklahoma. Yes. But that's why I'm saying. But Ohio, because yeah, that's, that's a governor I'm... that can also mm-hmm. pull a little Mitt Romney every now and then. <laughs> I mean, he can swing. So I think it has a shot. It's got to go through the judiciary, but I think it has a shot. But this is how we're going to win this battle on kids. It's state by state. It's not federal. Yeah, yeah. I, I would yeah. tend to agree with that. Uh, the Ohio bill, by the way, actually will create an administrative process to resolve disputes over what is taught uh, in the classroom yeah. as opposed to the Florida legislation, which opens up uh, open schools up to face lawsuits. Mm. I Eric. mean, it's... Eric's like, I don't really care what it does. Get Man, your kids the, the hell out yeah, of public yeah, schools yeah. either way. There you go. You said it for me. Get them out. <laughs> that, that way it won't abolish even matter. Them, and, then, and, and then abolish them. I think abolish that's, them, that's Eric. That's true solution. But, you, hey, more people are waking up. Let's so get charters going. Yeah. You know you've been working with someone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you already knew what time. I was going to say. She said it for me, so it works. <laughs> Every time I'm like, I, I already know what Eric's going to say. <laughs> I already know what he's going to say. Can we just show me your hat? Yeah. It's the same. That's the time. We're looking at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let the rebellion rise. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to the program, you haven't tuned in yet before, we're happy to have you here. Please make sure that you are following both of these gentlemen. Uh, as I said, they are creating content on their own channels that you are not going to want to miss. This is Jakub Buyans with The Bottom Line. That is his show that you can go subscribe to. By the way, for those of you who are listening on audio podcasts, it is spelled J A C O. B-O-O-Y-E-N-S. You are welcome. It is one of the most frequent questions Thank you, that I get. Sarah. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, also, don't forget Eric July. It is for Canon's sake. He yeah. is Young Ripa 59 on YouTube. Yes, and uh, while we're promoting people here, <laughs> I'd like to uh, promote Blaze TV. Make sure that you are subscribed if you are not already. We don't know when we're going to be turned off of all of this social media. YouTube, Twitter, you name it. So make sure you are subscribed. It is blazetv.com. You can use promo code NEWS. Save yourself a little money. Thanks, guys. Thank you.